In this video, I'm going to give you a quick tour of the GitHub code space for Flood Modeler API. So the code space is essentially a simple way of you getting a lot of the benefits from using the Flood Modeler API without having to do any installation of Python or um, editors or anything like that. So all you need to do is go to the Flood Modeler API GitHub page, which you'll find a link for on Flood Modeler's website, or if you just Google it, you'll find it. And it looks a bit like this. You'll also need a GitHub account, so you can sign up for one for free if you don't have one already. So this is what the sort of homepage for this site is. So all you need to do is if you scroll down slightly, you'll see this black button here called open in GitHub code spaces. So if you click that and then you just have to click create code space. So what this will now do is set up a brand new development environment entirely within your browser for the Flood Modeler API. And it'll take about a minute to completely set up, um, but you should see it start to load um, this environment. So it's based off a program called VS Code. So if you've used that before, it should look familiar. Um, but otherwise, it's a fully featured development environment in your browser. So one of the things we've put in to make it a bit easier for people getting started, um, especially if you've never used Python before, uh, is we point you to this um, sort of how to get started with, with the API. Um, so there's some information here uh, about the code space, but also there's this getting started notebook. You can also access this just by clicking um, on the files button here. But if we go to this notebook, um, this is essentially a notebook that will give you a basic introduction to Python um, and also an introduction to the Flood Modeler API. So you just have to read a couple of the instructions at the top. Essentially what this will tell you to do is to click this select kernel button and then Python environments and then just select this Python environment and that's you ready to go. So the notebook will go into as I said, an introduction into Python. So from the very basics, so how to sort of print a message and you're able to run these um, code blocks with the little play button um, and also edit them however you want and run only Python code in, in each of these. So it will go through the basics of Python, get you sort of familiar with the syntax and what you can do. Um, and if you keep going down, you'll find that then it introduces you to the Flood Modeler API. And so you don't have to do any installation of, of the API or Python, it's all ready to use here. So this will give you a, um, an intro into the main classes and how to work with them. In addition to just the sort of getting started notebook, you've also got access to the full code base as well as all the sample scripts. Um, and you're free to create your own scripts, um, create your own tools and everything within this environment. Um, and everything you do in here is private to your account still. So you're able to drag and drop um, data into here as well. So maybe it's DAT files or CSV files and, and work with them within this environment and even produce outputs and download them as well. If you right click any file, you can download them. And all of that is then uh, private to your account. So lastly, in terms of um, when you're finished with working in the code space, if you just leave the window, um, what's clever is it will actually keep your code space um, saved. So if you come back to the uh, GitHub page and click on this green button, you'll find that the code space you've created, um, which by default get given a, a random name, um, will still be here. So it means you can leave it and come back to it and you'll still have anything, any changes you made or any data you loaded will be saved there. Um, active means it's running in the background, so you can actually uh, do open in browser and just jump straight back to it. Um, you can also stop the code space, which just stops it running in the background, um, which will happen automatically anyway if there's 30 minutes of inactivity. Um, you can also rename it or even delete the, brand, uh, delete the code space. Um, one thing just to note is you'll see it says the code space usage um, is paid for by your account. Um, 
all that means is that if you wanted to, you can set up billing with GitHub um, and you can actually um, set it up so that you pay for a large number of hours or a more high performance um, sort of setup. Uh, for, for majority of cases, you wouldn't need to do this because you get 20, uh, 60 free hours by default anyway. Um, and if you don't set up billing, if you use all of that, then it will just um, stop for the month and you'll just have to wait till next month for those 60 hours to reset. Um, so you won't need to, to pay for it unless you wanting to use a lot of hours on it. Um, so that's everything uh, with the code space. And I think in the next video, I will uh, start to use the code space to sort of show you some of the things you can do. Thank you.